15. Um, he, there he says, well, Jesus is the image of God, and so is Adam. Therefore, that doesn't prove Jesus is God. Okay, fine, let's ignore that part, because uh, <clears throat> the argument is not that Jesus is the image of God, therefore he's God. No, that's not the argument. Uh, the argument is what Paul says before and after Colossians 1.15. First, let's see what he says about the term firstborn of all creation. You guys ready? Look. Look what he says. This is what he claims. Another important point about Colossians 1.15 is that it calls Jesus the firstborn of creation. Yet God is uncreated. Jesus being the firstborn of creation means he is part of creation and a created being. Hence, he cannot possibly be God. Now again, since he went through the book of Colossians, this shows that Sammy has no shame in distorting and lying and perverting the truth of God. And so it's not surprising that Sammy would distort Colossians because notice what he did not quote. Do you guys see it? He stops at verse 15, but he did not quote verses 16 to 17, which explains what Paul meant when he said that Jesus Christ is the firstborn of all creation. Now, Basai, do me a favor, quote 15 to 17. Because in 16, Paul goes on to explain what he means, that Jesus is the firstborn of all creation. How do we know? Because he introduces verse 16 with, For. That word for explains what he means. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Now notice verse 16. Look what it says here. Follow with me, guys. For. Notice that. The word for indicates that Paul is going to explain what he just said in the prior verse. For by him all things were created. Now let's just stop right there before you quote any further. Let me ask a question to everyone in the room. If Jesus Christ is the agent that the Father used to create all things that are created, then how can he be part of creation when he exists all created things? Can someone help me understand that? Do you see what verse 16 says? For by or in him all, not some, every created thing was created in Christ, meaning that creative energy, that power uh, that God used to create all things, the power that was necessary to create all things, resides in Christ. Christ has all creative power and energy, which is why he could bring creation into being. Right? So let me ask the question again. If Jesus Christ is the agent, in whom the Father created all things, how can he be a creature? So now notice, firstborn of all creation cannot mean that he's part of creation. Why? Because of verses 16 to 17. Jesus clearly existed before all creation and is the one that God used to create everything. If that wasn't clear, let's continue reading verse 16. Here's what 16 goes on to say. In case we didn't get it, right? In case we didn't get it, in case it wasn't clear that all things mean all created things, look what Paul goes on to say. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Now notice the last part. For him. This helps us understand what Paul meant by firstborn. For him. Every created thing was created in and through Christ for who? Christians. According to Paul, all creation was created in and through Christ for who? Who was it created for? All created things were created for Christ? Who's Him? In the context, Christ the way, who's Him? Exactly. But wait, according to the Old Testament, Yahweh created everything by Himself for His own glory. Isaiah 44.24 Isaiah 43, 6 to 7, and 20 to 21. Can you do me a favor, Bayside, and post those references? According to the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, who helped Yahweh to create all things? No one. Yahweh did it by himself. And when Yahweh created all things and created Israel, who did he create it for? For himself. Thus says Yahweh the Lord, your Redeemer. Who formed you from the womb? I am the Lord, or Yahweh. I am Yahweh, who made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself. Did you catch it? One more time, my brother. Thank you for posting verses. Thus says the Lord, 
meaning Yahweh, your Redeemer who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who made all things. Who made all things? The Lord Yahweh, who alone stretch out the heavens, who spread out the earth by myself. But now we have a problem, don't we? Follow with me, guys. Paul says that Jesus Christ is the agent that God used to create everything. Isaiah says Yahweh alone by himself made all things. Now how do we reconcile that? Paul is a monotheistic Jew who affirms the Old Testament, who believes the Old Testament is the revealed words of God and is zealous for the God of Israel. How do we reconcile what the Old Testament says with what Paul says? Paul says the Father through and in the Son created every created thing. And every created thing was created for the Son, the firstborn of all creation. How do we reconcile these two statements, Old and New Testaments? What's the conclusion? How do we reconcile? Now, Paul obviously would not want to contradict the Old Testament, even if you don't believe the New Testament's inspired. Paul, being a monotheistic Jew who loves the God of Israel and loves the Old Testament, would not deliberately contradict the Old Testament. So then how do we reconcile what Paul says about Jesus with the Old Testament? Paul says the Father created everything in and through Christ for Christ, the firstborn, his beloved Son. Old Testament says Yahweh created everything by himself, for himself. What's the conclusion? What does Paul believe about Jesus? In light of this Old Testament truth, what does Paul believe about Jesus? Exactly. You got it, Christ away. Now, you may disagree with Paul, that that's fine. But at least represent Paul accurately. So then why did Sami Zatut quote verse 15, but forget to quote 16 to 17, which destroys his entire argument and destroys his articles? Verses 16 to 17, in of itself, destroys both his articles. Right? Why didn't he quote it? You know why he didn't quote it. Now, let's go back to see. When Yahweh created everything for himself, who did he create it for? Did he create it for someone else or for himself? Now, my brother, uh, Bayside, can you post? Yeah, Isaiah 43, 6-7. Watch here. Isaiah 43, 6 to 7. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who's called by my name, whom I created for my glory whom I formed and made. Notice, Yahweh said he created a people for his glory, not for someone else. But Paul says everything was created for Jesus. Now let's see Isaiah 43, 20 to 21. Isaiah 43, 20 to 21. See what he says. What, what does Isaiah say about Yahweh creating things for himself? The wild beasts will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people. To give drink to my chosen people. The people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Yahweh says he created everything by himself alone. Yahweh says he created the people for himself for his glory. Let's look at Colossians 1.16 one more time. Watch here. Here's Colossians 1.16 one more time. For in him, Jesus Christ, all things were created. So according to Paul, the Father used the Son to create everything. Old Testament says Yahweh did it by himself. In heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, where the thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things, not some things, all things were created through him and for him. Paul just said, Paul just said, that the Father created all things in and through the Son, for the Son. Everything exists for Jesus. But we just read in the Old Testament, everything exists for Yahweh. How do we reconcile those statements? 